Support for this podcast and the following message come from Money Mind from Prudential, a podcast powered by your financial behavior. Hear insights from financial psychologists, experts, and more. Download and subscribe to Money Mind wherever you find podcasts and learn more at slate.com slash money mind. Hey, podcast listeners, it's Ophira. Now we've got only two more shows at the Bell House in 2016, so you don't want to miss out. On November 14th, we've got Dennis Quaid, Carrie Elwes, and Christian Cook from the Crackle series, The Art of More. And on December 12th, we're joined by fashion guru, Tim Gunn. Info at amatickets.org. You can take Ask Me Another and more with you with the NPR One app. NPR One finds the best from public radio and beyond. Election essentials, local stories, and your favorite podcasts. NPR One is ready to make driving, working, or cleaning the house so much better. Find NPR O-N-E in your app store now. It has been a stressful few months, but today we have a brand new episode of Ask Me Another for you, loaded with laughs. We taped it in September in Dallas, Texas, with special guest Brooklyn Decker. Enjoy. Warning, this podcast uses some unsavory language. Please be advised. From NPR and WNYC, coming to you from the Majestic Theater in Dallas, Texas, it's NPR's Hour of Puzzles, Word Games, and Trivia, Ask Me Another. I'm Jonathan Colton. Now here's your host, Ophira Eisenberg. Thank you, Jonathan. We have an amazing show for you. Four brilliant contestants are backstage recommending barbecue places to each other waiting to play our nerdy games, but only one will be our big winner. And we are so excited to be here in Dallas, uh, but we always bring a little bit of Brooklyn with us wherever we go. And in this case, it's our special guest, actor Brooklyn Decker will be joining us later in the show. I got to say, I'm especially glad to be here because I'm from Calgary, Alberta, which is kind of like the Dallas of Canada. Uh, with our, our beef and our stampede and our oil. But Canadian cowboys are a little bit different than Texas cowboys. Uh, for one, instead of 10-gallon hats, they wear 37.85 liter hats. <laughs> and in Canada, when you twirl a lasso over your head, it sounds like this. Sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> Let's get things started with our first two contestants. First up, Marcy Verastiki. You say you have the best job in the world being a grade school librarian. Yes, I do. All right, why is that the best job in the world? Well, I get, still get to be a teacher, Yeah. but I don't have to do the grading <laughs> or the lesson planning. I'm the aunt of the students. I keep them for a little bit, and then they go away. <laughs> Your opponent is Etienne Coulange. You are a technology consultant, but pretended to be a spider expert on your friend's talk radio show. Uh, What happened was uh, (laughs) I went on and uh, we just did theater to the mind and pretended there were spiders crawling all over the studio. Yeah. Uh, It ended up going really badly. Um, (laughs) There were bites. And two weeks later, I came on and pretended to be a snake expert on the same show, and that didn't go well either. (laughs) Marcy and ATN, the first of you who wins two of our games will move on to our final round at the end of the show. So let's go to our first game. Marcy, if you owned a sports team, what would you name it? Probably the Austin Tacos. ATN, if you owned a sports team, what would you name it? Uh, I would put another basketball franchise in Miami and call it the Humidity. And then they'd say, it's not the heat, it's the humidity. Yeah. (laughs) So your first game is called Franchise Rebranding. In this game, we're going to pretend that North American pro sports teams were sold to new owners. And each new owner wants to change the team's name by adding one letter to it. Let's go to Jonathan Colton for an example. Sure. For example, if I said, Lens Crafters bought this Texas hockey team and now requires its players to make prolonged eye contact, you would answer the Dallas Stairs. <laughs> Adding one letter to Dallas's pro hockey team, the Stars. 
So buzz in to answer, and the winner will be one step closer to the final round at the end of the show. Here we go. Julian Assange bought a basketball team in Southern California. He hopes to recruit Kobe Bryant to release documents and expose government secrets. ATN. The Los Angeles Leakers. That's right. Yeah. Tom Brady doubles down on Deflategate and renames this Southern Florida basketball team to celebrate rules infractions. Marcy. The Miami Cheat. That's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? It's not the cheat, it's the humidity. <laughs> <laughs> The American Kennel Club bought a Pennsylvania football team and renamed it to honor a small dog breed. Marcy. The Philadelphia Beagles. Yeah, that's right. This football team was bought by the metric system. <laughs> Bear with me. And moved 2,500 kilometers away from St. Louis. Its name now celebrates a unit of mass. The Marcy. Los Angeles Grams. That's right. Yeah. Well done. Sounds like the softball team for some L.A. Coke dealers, but... <laughs> <laughs> this West Florida baseball team was bought by a medical imaging company. Now you'll be able to see the players' bones during instant replays. ATN. X-rays. You got it, yes. <laughs> the AFC football team that plays at MetLife Stadium was bought by the American Ballet Theater. Now players must gracefully leap from one cleat to land on the other. Yeah, take your time. Uh, maybe we should go to our puzzle guru, Ar Chung, for a hint. Yeah. Uh, well, the hint for the team is that it plays in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Right. Etienne. The Gleants. <laughs> I love the Gleants. That, that is the most fantastic guess I have ever heard on this show. <laughs> <laughs> it totally sounds like it could be a ballet move. It <laughs> yes. may very well be. Uh, the Gleants is a ballet move that <laughs> was created by Etienne Coulange. <laughs> is a public radio contestant? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And on that very night, he made up a dance. I'm sorry to report that's not what we're looking for. Marcy, do you know what the answer is? I know, it's shocking. I do not. Uh, does anybody know what it is, or is it just too hard? Yeah, it's the New York Jetés. I yeah. know more about sports than ballet. Yeah, me too, sister. <laughs> This is your last clue. The Cuban government bought a baseball team in Texas's most populous city and renamed it after Cuba's leader. ATN. The Castros, the Houston Castros. Yes, you are correct. <laughs> Puzzleger Archung, how did our contestants do? We have a tie. So. Oh. Here we go with a tiebreaker. Hands on your buzzers. An association of deli owners buys the local Queens baseball team to advertise their cold cuts. Marcy. The meats. That is correct. <laughs> Congratulations, Marcy. You're one step closer to the final round. Let's go to your next game. Uh, Marcy, what town did you grow up in? Houston. Okay, and what is the best thing about Houston? The humidity. <laughs> uh, ATN, what town did you grow up in? Uh, I was born in Colchester, Connecticut. Wait a minute. Do you know that I was born in Colchester, Connecticut? I, I, I mean, I lived in that. Colchester. I wasn't born there, but I lived in Colchester, Connecticut yeah. for my entire childhood. Yeah. Probably saw you. <laughs> I don't know. A little baby. In those two early years. <laughs> did you get ice cream at the food bag? Uh, I do not recall that. Did you get hamburgers at Harry's? I don't know. I'm trying to connect with you, man. Okay. We'll talk, we'll figure we'll this talk out later. later. We'll talk later. Your next challenge is a guessing game called Texas Towns. Texas is the second largest state in the union, but we say it's number one when it comes to unusual town names. 
So I'm going to give you three Texas towns. Two are real, found in the Texas Municipal Guide, and one is made up. You just have to guess which one is fake, and if you get it wrong, your opponent can steal. We're going to alternate back and forth, so no need to buzz in. Marcy, you won the last game, so if you win this, you're going straight to the final round. ATN, you have to win this, or you're going to be sent to San Antonio. Mm. That's tough. <laughs> Here we go. Marcy, which one of these towns is not real? Telegraph, telephone, or television? Television. That is correct. Yeah. Yeah. Telephone was named after the fact that it had a telephone. <laughs> ATN, China, Egypt, Germany. Which one is not real? China. China is real. Yeah. Marcy, can you steal? Egypt. Egypt is also real. Yeah. <laughs> Germany, clearly false. What's wrong with you people? Marcy. Better, best, very best. <laughs> very best. Oh, very best is very real. Very real. It's not so great. <laughs> it's just okay, right? I know. Etienne, can you steal? Better. That is correct. Better is not real. Better got better, became best. ATN, Bigfoot, uncertain, conspiracy. Bigfoot. Oh, Bigfoot is real, yeah. <laughs> and the town. Um, <laughs> it was actually named after town resident William A.A. A. Bigfoot Wallace. He had big feet, seriously. <laughs> Why they call you Bigfoot? Oh, I see. <laughs> Marcy, can you steal? Conspiracy. That is correct. It is not a city. Yeah. I mean, or is it? We don't know. But for the purposes of this game, Marcy, early, noonday, midnight. Early. <laughs> Early's a real city. <laughs> Early's motto is a wonderful place to spend the rest of your life. It's like, Vaguely threatening. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ugh. It's like stolen from a retirement home. <laughs> ATN, can you steal? Noonday? <laughs> Noonday, super weird, but is real. That is real. <laughs> Midnight, not real. This is your final clue. ATN, Enchanted Oaks, Fairyland, Tiki Island. Enchanted Oaks. Enchanted Oaks is real. Yeah, yeah. All right, Marcy, can you steal Fairyland, Tiki Island? Fairyland. <laughs> Hard to believe that Tiki Island is a resort living community, making Fairyland actually not a real place. <laughs> that is correct. All right, Puzzle Guru Archung, how did our contestants do? Congratulations, Marcy. You've won two games, and you're moving on to the final round at the end of the show. Coming up, we'll find out who will face off against Marcy in our final round at the end of the show. And Joko takes on Jacko in a musical parody of Billie Jean. I'm Ophira Eisberg, and you're listening to Ask Me Another from NPR. Support for Ask Me Another and the following message comes from the new original comedy Search Party on TBS. An official selection at the 2016 South by Southwest Film Festival, watch the mystery unravel as a lost soul and her group of friends search for a missing girl they barely even knew. You can binge the entire season of Search Party in one week starting Monday, November 21st at 11, 10 Central on TBS. Hey, thanks so much for listening to Ask Me Another, and you should check out NPR's Pop Culture Happy Hour. Every week, they bring you fun and funny conversation about the best in movies, TV shows, books, music, and more. From their fall movie and TV preview to in-depth discussions with Trevor Noah and Shonda Rhimes. So you're bound to hear something that makes you happy every week. That's Pop Culture Happy Hour from NPR. Find it now on the NPR One app 
and at npr.org slash podcasts. This is Ask Me Another, NPR's hour of puzzles, word games, and trivia. I'm Jonathan Colton, here with puzzle guru Art Chung. Now from the Majestic Theater in Dallas, Texas, here's your host, Ophira Eisenberg. Thank you, Jonathan. Before the break, our contestant Marcy won her way to the final round at the end of the show. We'll find out a little later who she will face off against. But first, it's time for a game we call Mystery Guest. A stranger is about to join us on stage. Jonathan and I have no idea who this person is or what makes them special. But our puzzle guru, Art Chung, does. That's right. You and Jonathan will have to ask yes or no questions to figure out our mystery guest secret. Mystery guest, please introduce yourself. I'm Mary Walker from Ennis, Texas. So in 2012, at the age of 53, Mary accomplished something pretty cool. And your job is to figure out what she did. Okay. Mary, is the cool thing you accomplished, did it take place on Earth? Yes. Okay. That's a good way to narrow it down. Thank you. Mary, was the thing that you accomplished sports-related? Yes. Uh Do you run? (laughs) Yes. Kind of. Kind of. Uh, Did this thing that you did, (laughs) this thing that you accomplished, have to do with running? No. Uh Okay, when you're a good runner, though, right? When you accomplish whatever this amazing feat is, were you given any kind of award or medal or trophy? Yes. Interesting. Was there swimming involved? No. Uh Uh-huh. Did it happen outdoors? No. Interesting. (laughs) An indoor sports-related thing. Yes. Helicoptering is out. Right. (laughs) Hot air balloon. (laughs) Don't get you hung up on that answer. Okay, great. Did you have to go faster than someone else? Yes. Aha! A race, they call it. Yes. Yes. I could have... <laughs> the word came to me only after the concept. Okay. But that's what okay. I meant. Good. Sports is hard, man. Tell me about it. <laughs> that's why I'm a public radio personality. <laughs> uh, is this something you achieve individually as in not part of a team? Yes. Okay. Uh, and we've, we've ruled out running. It took place indoors, but Art's like, don't get hung up on it. Don't know what that means. Did you, did you break a record of some kind? Yes. 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 What? Art, why did she make that weird face? <laughs> <laughs> Which I wasn't sure. You, you did, you, at the time you broke a record, right? At that time, I, yeah, sure. in 2012, I did break a record. So it's not swimming, it's not sprinting, uh, it's uh, individual. Okay, bi- bicycling? No. Gymnastics? No. How is there a race in gymnastics? (laughs) I'll give you a big hint. Yeah. Okay. We're in Texas. Yeah. Ah. Could be rodeo. Rodeo. Yes. We got it right. It's rodeo. Rodeo. So in 2012, Mary won the Wrangler National Finals Rodeo in barrel racing. She was the second oldest person to ever win the event. So, Mary, for those of us who don't know, can you explain what barrel racing is? Uh, Barrel racing is a timed event in the rodeo, and it's the only girls' event in the professional rodeo. So the fastest time wins. Uh, You are on a horse that actually runs around three barrels in a cloverleaf pattern as fast as you can. That's pretty dangerous, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But you were drawn to the danger, the risk factor. I was drawn to the danger, and the danger did happen. And um, so, but I'm okay. Everything's great now. Uh, with eight plates and 11 pins in my hip, I'm, I'm good to go. But yes. Wow. Did you always ride horses growing up? Or? Yes. yes. I've always rode growing up, yes. But competitively at this level for about five years. And what made you decide that was the competition you wanted to be part of? Um, You know, I like fast horses, and um, I like pretty horses, so um, that was the best event that I could come up with to do besides bull riding. Right. Not as pretty of a horse in bull riding, is it? (laughs) No. 
And this isn't a senior circuit competition. What's the age range of the competitors? Uh, you have to be 18 years or older to compete. So uh, this year I've already qualified to go to my fifth national finals rodeo. And the youngest competitor, thank you, is 19. Uh, how long do you think you'll compete? Uh, you know, I keep saying until my horse is done, I will be done when he's done. But I think he just keeps going and I get more doneer. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I hope hopefully another couple of years. That's fantastic. And uh, you're in the National Cowgirl Hall of Fame. Yes. And your husband is in the Texas Rodeo Cowboy Hall of Fame. And the National Cowboy oh. Hall of Fame. Yes. Uh, which of the Hall of Fames are better? Uh, I think the Cowgirl Hall of Fame is much better. Clearly. Yes. <laughs> Clearly. Uh, amazing. I'm totally honored and thrilled to meet you. Thanks for coming on stage and playing a game with us. Oh, I was so honored to get invited. I live 30 minutes south of here, so it was great to be invited to this, and we're having a blast. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad. Everyone give it up for our mystery yeah. guest, Mary Walker. Thank you. Now let's meet our next two contestants. First up, Stephanie Hagedorn, you work with Watson, the supercomputer. I do. Okay. So if you don't know, Watson, the supercomputer uh, is the supercomputer that played Jeopardy and won. Mm -hmm. Do you think Watson will one day wake up and the computers will take over the world? Um, yes. Okay. I'll just say yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thanks no, for thinking accurate. about it, at least. <laughs> but you're working with supercomputers. Now, I don't work with supercomputers. That sounds like a very <laughs> intense thing. I work with, like, a stupid handheld at the very best. But a supercomputer is a whole I'm different... I'm right here, Afira. <laughs> <laughs> Your nickname is Handheld. <laughs> yeah, I, can't, I can't tell that story right now. But Watson uh, is still emotionally stunted, you would say. Uh, he can perceive emotion really well and like how people write and speak, but it, he's not so funny himself Good. at the moment. Good. <laughs> yeah, Hilarious. I don't need, I don't need competition, <laughs> Watson. <laughs> Your opponent is Alyssa Sable. You recently just switched jobs, and now you work at a babysitting agency. Yeah, I do a nanny agency in Austin. Alyssa, you own two dogs that, okay, as a dog lover, I love knowing that, but they are both deaf and you've taught them sign language. Yes and no. Okay. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> um, both of them were rescue dogs, so they came to us with a little bit of sign language knowledge, but for the things that we want them to know, then, then yeah, we definitely go through and, and try to teach new things. Okay, so what are some of the newer commands? Um, so we have uh, Great Pyrenees, and we do this for Crate. Crossing um, your wrists. Crossing our wrists, and so she'll just go straight into her kennel. Um, and then she does this for sit. It's kind of complicated because we've got... Kind of pursing your fingers yeah, together Yeah, pursing your down. fingers, and then if you do a fist forward, that's sit for the other one. So it's a little bit... Oh, they have <laughs> they different have totally signs. They speak different, different languages. <laughs> they speak totally different languages. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, your first game is a music parody game called Other Billies Who Are Also Not My Lover. <laughs> Jonathan Colton, what is this about? Well, we rewrote Michael Jackson's Billie Jean to be about other famous people and fictional characters named Billy. So buzz in to guess which Billy I'm singing about, and the winner will be one step closer to the final round at the end of the show. You ready? Yes. Okay, here we go. Such a singer, a music queen from the New York scene, sang jazz and blues and what's in between, like God bless the child. Strange fruit, nicknamed Lady Day. Stephanie. Billy Holiday? That's right, Billy Holiday. Just a side bonus question that is not worth any points at all. Do you know Billy Holiday's real name? I do not. William, William Holiday. Holiday. <laughs> We've been working together too long, I fear. <laughs> Long Island's where his career began, 50 year long span. He said to call him the piano man, he might be right. Always in a New York state of mind. Stephanie. Billy Joel. Yeah, you got it. This guy played Gail Sayers, best friend in Brian's song. He advertised for Code 45. 
Used to own the Falcon, then he gambled it away. But on his feet he'll land, oh, his name's Calrissian. <laughs> Stephanie. Billy D. Billy D. Williams. Yes. <laughs> I feel most of the listeners hearing that clue go, what, what, what? oh. Yeah, yeah, they're just like, who, what, what? Oh, yeah, Lando. Yeah. That coal miner's kid does ballet. He's just a boy in England. Give him a chance. Because the kid just wants to dance. Stephanie. Billy Elliot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Outlaw from the 19th century, man of infamy When Sheriff Garrett caught up with him, his end was grim Boyish face, he was dead at 22 Stephanie Billy the Kid You got it <laughs> I think Stephanie's a... <laughs> I think Stephanie's got Watson in, yeah. her, in her buzzer thumb Practiced it's nice being friends with a supercomputer when you go on a game show, huh? It's pretty good. Pretty yeah, good. Pretty good. I'm blaming it on Watson. <laughs> <laughs> she was a singer at age 15, British music scene. She switched to acting and scored a coup on Doctor Who, where she played a companion named Rose. Oh. oh this is where we found, found a, chink in the a armor. little pocket. <laughs> huh? Rose? Rose on Doctor Who? No? Never seen it. I know, me too. I've never watched it. <laughs> Look at food. Food. Oh, boy. Just it oh, in. Oh. Boy. I like Harry Potter a lot, though. Does that <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who is it, everybody? <laughs> Billy Piper is the name of the actor. Mm-hmm. You guys don't care. Take it you in. You hate Doctor Who. Take it in. You hate Doctor Who and everything he stands for. <laughs> They literally are saying Doctor Who. Doctor That's, Who? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> this is your last clue. SNL then, he played Harry. City Slickers rode a horse with no fuss. Cause he still looks marvelous. Alyssa. Okay, I know it starts with Billy. <laughs> <laughs> You're halfway there, Alyssa. <laughs> I, I, I thought it'd come to me <laughs> I want you to get this so bad I, I do too, I just want one <laughs> It's like uh, Billy and then something And if I were to add, it could be like Billy something light Or Billy something meth Or <laughs> Oh! Billy Crystal Yes! yes. I knew it was in there. I knew it was in there. I'm glad, I'm glad we stuck with it. Thank you, Alyssa. Art Chung, I think I know the answer, but how did our contestants do? Stephanie, well done. You're one step closer to the final round. Let's go to your next game. Stephanie, what is something you miss about the 80s? Um, I miss the movies. The, the movies? movies the 80s. Like which one? I just liked that you could, like, settle everything on the slopes, you know. (laughs) (laughs) It was a simpler time. Yeah, it was a simpler time. Alyssa, what is something you miss about the 80s? Um, So I I lived about four years of my life in the 80s, so I miss, you know, being coddled and catered to basically 24 hours a day. Uh, Say? (laughs) Carried. Yeah, shout out to my mom who's who's here. That's nice. (laughs) Uh, Well, the 80s were an eventful decade for Dallas. The city got a new mass transit system, faced financial challenges, built big buildings, and even bigger hair. Those things happened in the 1980s, and they also happened in the 1880s. So Jonathan and I will continue to draw those parallels in a trivia game about the 1880s called 80s Nostalgia. 
Stephanie, you won the last game, so if you win this, you are in the final round. Alyssa, you need to win this, or our intern will tell you what year she was born in. <laughs> Makes everyone feel bad. All right, here we go. In the 1980s, Aerosmith's song, Love in an Elevator, was all the rage. In the 1880s, the elevator was all the rage. <laughs> Thanks to the development of very tall buildings, also known as what? <laughs> Alyssa. Skyscrapers. That's correct. Correct, yeah. In the 1980s, TV audiences gawked at General Hospital's alliterative pair, Luke and Laura. In the 1880s, live audiences gawked at the circus show produced by what alliterative pair? <laughs> Stephanie. Barnum and Bailey's? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, technically, it's Barnum and Bailey. I like that you made it like the liqueur. Possessive. <laughs> <laughs> in the 1980s people were terrified by stephen king's cujo a fictional dog with rabies in the 1880s people were terrified by actual rabies <laughs> until a vaccine was developed by what french chemist also known for sterilizing milk <laughs> stephanie uh, louis pasteur you got right. it yep. In the 1980s, Flashdance depicted the double life of a welder who was secretly a maniac on the floor. In the 1880s, what popular book depicted the double life of a physician who was secretly a straight-up maniac? <laughs> Stephanie? Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde? Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> In the 1980s, popularity soared for the band ACDC. In the 1880s, popularity soared for AC, as an alternating current, during Thomas Edison's rivalry with which inventor? <laughs> Alyssa. Mm. That was a premature buzz. <laughs> <laughs> but you're in. Um, Billy something. <laughs> Billy, it's... I know, yeah. No, it's, it's, no, it's Billy something. Uh, I'm going to have to pass that one. <laughs> Stephanie, can you steal? Tesla. That's right. All right, this is your last clue. In the 1980s, Pictionary encouraged slapdash sketching. In the 1880s, George Surratt's painting, A Sunday on La Grande Jatte, encouraged painstaking application of small dots of color, a style known as what? Pointillism. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Never play Pictionary with Surratt. Takes forever. <laughs> also, you have to stand way back to see what the hell he's drawing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Puzziger, Art Chung, how did our contestants do? We had two great contestants. Stephanie, congratulations. You've won both games, and you're moving on to the final round. It's settled. Our finalists are Marcy and Stephanie, and they will face off in our final round at the end of the show. If you've been bragging about your trivia skills since the 1980s or even the 1880s, just go to amatickets.org to become a contestant. And coming up, we're going to fast forward to the 1990s for a game about boy bands with our special guest, Brooklyn Decker. I'm Ophira Eisenberg, and you're listening to Ask Me Another from NPR. Support for this podcast and the following message comes from 20th Century Fox with Rules Don't Apply, a romantic dramedy written, directed, and produced by 15-time Academy Award nominee Warren Beatty. Starring Lily Collins, Alden Ehrenreich, Warren Beatty, and at Benning, Matthew Broderick, and Alec Baldwin. Rules Don't Apply follows an aspiring young actress and her ambitious young driver as they struggle hopefully with the absurd eccentricities of the wildly unpredictable billionaire for whom they work. In theaters, November 23rd. Support for this podcast comes from the new original comedy Search Party on TBS. Here's John Early describing his character, Elliot. Elliot is a self-made man, just very much of this kind of multi-hyphenate generation, which is so true to so many people I know, of just like actor, producer, event planner. You know, he does everything, which means he kind of does nothing. You can binge the entire season of Search Party in one week, starting Monday, November 21st at 11, 10 Central on TBS.
This is NPR's Ask Me Another. I'm Jonathan Colton, here with puzzle guru Art Chung at the Majestic Theater in Dallas, Texas. Now here's your host, Ophira Eisenberg. Thank you, Jonathan. Soon we'll find out which of our contestants, Marcy or Stephanie, will be today's big winner. But first, it's time to welcome our special guest. She's a film and TV actor who plays Jane Fonda's daughter on the Netflix comedy series Grace and Frankie. Please welcome Brooklyn Decker. Welcome to Ask Me Another, Brooklyn. Thank you for having me. Our pleasure. Now, I said earlier, I made a joke that we always bring a little Brooklyn with us when we travel with this show. You do. I know, you do. Uh, How did your parents pick that name, just so I know? I was named after a horse. Really? That's the story. The horse's name was Brooklyn? The horse's name was Brooke. My mom's best friend had a horse named Brooke. She loved the name. And my dad is like the epitome of a dad joke guy. He's like, what if we name her Brooklyn? And it stuck. And so it's a very trendy name now. It is. Yes. I just got made fun of as a child. Did people know the place and they thought it was... Sort of. I grew up in North Carolina, so they're like, oh, that's kind of New York adjacent. And I ended up living in Brooklyn, which was a thing in itself. So when you live in Brooklyn, your name is Brooklyn. It was hard. Did people just call you here? It was hard. They did. (laughs) And now I live in Texas. Right. So you... I found the solution. Yes. Now, you star in the Netflix series uh, Grace and Frankie with Lily Tomlin and Jane Fonda. You play Jane Fonda's daughter, Mallory. Okay, so here you are acting, and you get a job with two people I've looked up to my entire life as comedy legends. Same, yep. Right, and so you walk in there. Are they the kind of people that, you know, they have to warm up to you? They might be checking you out a little bit? Or how did it start? Insta-hug. Really? Which is exactly what you want, right? Totally. You walk in, you're about to pee yourself because you're so nervous, and Jay Fonda opens her arms, and she's like, hi, you must be playing Mallory, and comes up and gives me a giant hug. And that kind of set the tone for the first season. And now, you know, we just wrapped our third season and now we play family on television. We like to act like family in real life. Um, But they are as wonderful as you hope they would be, which, as you know, isn't always the case. Right. And it's really scary when you work with someone you idolize, right? Because you're like, please, please live up to every expectation I have for you. And they both do. They do. Okay, so Jane Fonda as your fictional mother. Now, this woman has a presence, right? Oh, yes. (laughs) Oh, yes. And she's like a sexy older woman. I can't stop staring at her ass. (laughs) No, seriously, it's so beautiful and high. I don't understand how it works. It's the aerobics. Beautiful. And I have done her aerobics tapes, which I've never told her. (laughs) Holy (laughs) Jesus, you have to tell her that. I've never told her that, but I have done them with my mom. Like, you know, you know, like the Cindy Crawford and the Jane Fonda exercise tapes. Yeah. You did those with your mom. Absolutely. Does she exude any, like, advice and life tips here and there? She does. You know what's so interesting about her? And I actually feel like Jane and Lily are, are opposites as actors in that Jane is so technically precise when yeah. it comes to the way you hold your face to camera, where a camera angle is, where a camera sitting, where the light's hitting her. She's so knowledgeable about the technicalities that it takes to film a scene. Whereas Lily comes in and is just like this ball of energy and she's just living in her natural self, you know, and you just film it and it's perfect on camera. So they both bring these incredible strengths, but very opposing strengths to a scene. Like, I actually don't know that there's a difference between Lily and her character because she just shows up like that character, which maybe is her genius. That, it, yeah. that might be her genius. She might be a totally different person than I know. But, um, but yeah, she kind of shows up and she is Frankie it's on It's like set. effortless. Yeah, exactly. Now, you're also starring in an indie comedy uh, called Band-Aid. And, oh, yes. And one of the things that I found particularly interesting about this is that the entire production team is women. All females. All females. All females. Yes. Did yes. that feel different than other projects that you've worked on? One of my best friends is Zoe Lister-Jones, and she is an incredibly talented actress, and she was the director of this film. Right. She wrote it. She wrote it. It's her directorial debut, and she's unbelievable. So working with a close friend was really new for me. And then also showing up on set with just a, just a completely female-run crew, first time that's ever happened for me. Let me tell you, the efficiency on that set 
was unparalleled. These women are like, I have families to get home to. I have to feed my child at six o'clock. I got to clean my house when I get home. Let's get this shit done. You know, it was unbelievable and, and so much fun. And I think women in film are for some reason, because of the gender bias that exists in our industry, I think we're inherently a little bit more insecure at work. At least I am because you feel not as equal, which is really unfortunate. And so to go onto a set where females are running the show, the, confidence that everyone had and the humor that everyone brought to the set was unlike anything I've ever seen. It was very, very cool. That's what I like very to hear. Cool. That's what I like to hear. Now, Brooklyn, when we have our special guests on the show and we are trying to devise a game for them, we ask, you know, what kind of things are you into? What is your area of expertise? And you told us that you know a lot about boy bands. Um, All right. All right. Um, Let's dive into that. Do you, do you sure. know a lot about boy bands? I mean, ish. Okay. You know, I you know, like I I watched the O Town reality show back in the day, <laughs> and I did see Backstreet Boys and NSYNC in concert. Okay. I dressed as Baby Spice, and while that's a girl band, it still kind of goes in the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. know a little bit, of course. Who was your heartthrob? Well, Justin Timberlake, because he sort of like you know made the transition into being Justin Timberlake. Yeah. You know. JT was my boy. So if you saw him on the front of Tiger Beat, that was your issue? I mean, if we're getting very real, I practice making out on Jonathan Taylor Thomas, but there he's not in the boy go. band. So. Fantastic. Yeah. Brooklyn, are you ready for an Ask Me Another Challenge? Uh, sure. All no, right. but yes. Yes, Brooklyn Decker, everybody. <laughs> All right, Brooklyn, we are going to play Two Truths and a Lie, okay. boy band edition. Okay. We're going to give you three statements about a boy band, but one of them is a lie. Your job is to identify the lie. Okay. And if you get enough right, guess what? You're going to win and ask me another Rubik's Cube. That's right. That's very exciting. That's right. That's very exciting. Okay, here we go. The Backstreet Boys. Okay. Ryan Gosling declined an invitation to be one of the original Backstreet Boys. When the Backstreet Boys traveled, Kevin Richardson insisted on always taking a separate plane or... Nick Carter appeared in the movie Edward Scissorhands. Oh. Three equally implausible. Uh, wow. I feel like Ryan Gosling was Mickey Mouse Club, which was in sync ish. So I'm going to say that's the lie. No, that is, that oh, is rats. actually true. Oh, rats. Which one's a lie? Uh, it is the one about Kevin Richardson taking a separate plane. Oh. That's not true. He yeah. was happy to fly with the other Backstreet Boys. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> They're Backstreet Boys, after all. Right, they are back. And he was a cutie, that one. Yeah, he You know, was. he was a cutie. Okay. Yeah, okay. Ryan Gosling said no, but then he had a change of heart. What? And AJ did <gasps> not return his call. Do yeah, you think his, he regrets that decision? His career didn't go that well. It didn't? No. I question that decision, Ryan Gosling. <laughs> wow. Wow. Uh, 98 degrees. Okay, yeah. All yeah. right, which one's the lie? 98 Degrees sang with Stevie Wonder on the soundtrack to Disney's Mulan. 98 Degrees band member Justin Jeffrey ran for mayor of Cincinnati. Or all members of 98 Degrees have nut allergies. Uh, nut allergies is a lie. That is a lie. That is a lie. I, so I got one right. Got one <laughs> Next up is Boys to Men. For $189, you can buy a box of 24 roses with a card signed by That's all of the fact. members of Boys to Men. Because I oh. was just on their website last week, and that is a okay. fact. <laughs> I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh... Yeah, I think I might have the same question. They have their own brand of roses. Okay. Did you buy them? I did not, but that doesn't mean that I won't. Okay. <laughs> uh. I'm ashamed that I'm failing, but no. I'm also ashamed no, no. that I know what you I know. You can't win either way. <laughs> I know. Uh, okay, okay, let's go. Let's uh, okay, here okay. we go. Uh, boys to Men were founding investors in eHarmony, or their nicknames for each other were Squirt, Bass, Slim, and Alex Vanderpool. E-harmony is a lie. E-harmony is a lie. You're correct. <laughs> okay, let's <laughs> wrap it up with the band Together. Yes. Felt with the number two. Yeah, sure. That's so cool. Yeah, of course. Yeah, totally cool. 
Uh, the band song, The Hardest Part of Breaking Up is Getting Back Your Stuff, charted on the Billboard 200. <laughs> the members of Together met each other in middle school, or Together is a fictional boy band from an MTV show. Number two is a lie. Middle school, that is correct. The band is fictional. They did chart on the Billboard 200, even though they are fictional. Do you remember their hit? Uh, uh, I'm the hardest... Calculus? I do not. Does no. anyone remember their hit? What was it? You say my calculus, it says you plus me equals us. <laughs> That was a hit. That was a hit. Although I will, I will point out, technically, that's not calculus. <laughs> <laughs> All right, congratulations, Brooklyn. You have won an Ask Me Another Rubik's Cube. You did so well. <laughs> Brooklyn Decker stars in the Netflix series Grace and Frankie. Give it up one more time. Brooklyn Decker, everybody. Thank you. It's now time to crown our big winner. Let's bring back our finalists. Marcy, the future owner of the Austin Humidities. <laughs> and Stephanie, who's going to settle this on the slopes. <laughs> Puzzleger Art Chung, take it away. Thanks, Ophira. Marcy and Stephanie, your final round is called All My Exes Live in Texas. Every correct answer in this round will contain the letters EX in that order, but not necessarily at the beginning of the answer. So, for example, if I said it's our neighboring country to the south, it's Mexico. We're playing this round like a penalty shootout. You'll each get up to eight questions. The contestant who scores the most points will be our big winner, and you'll win an Ask Me Another Rubik's Cube signed by Brooklyn Decker. We flip the coin backstage, and Stephanie, you are going first. Stephanie, it's an overnight package delivery company. FedEx. That's right. <laughs> Marcy, a Microsoft spreadsheet program. Excel. That's right. <laughs> Stephanie, the branch of government that includes the president. Executive. That's right. <laughs> Marcy, when you want to convert the value of one currency to another, you look at this. Exchange. Yes, right, the exchange rate. We'll take that. Stephanie, the short-armed king of dinosaurs. The Tyrannosaurus Rex? That's right. Marcy, this 1992 song by Right Said Fred took a stand against torso coverings. Three seconds. We're going to have to give you three seconds. I don't know. Sorry, the answer we're looking for was, I'm too sexy for this shirt. Stephanie, a 1973 movie about a girl who's possessed by the devil. Uh, the Exorcism. That's right. Oh, Exorcist? Oh. Exorcist? Can we take that? I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Our judges are saying that's incorrect. You said exorcism first. I'm sorry. We're looking for exorcist. Tough call. Sorry. Marcy, a TV series about a serial killer starring Michael C. Hall. Dexter. That's right. We're at the halfway point, and the game is tied at three points each. Stephanie, in math, the power to which a number is raised. An exponent? That's right. Marcy, a large Texas-based gas and oil company. Exxon. Uh, could you be more specific? Exxon Mobil? That's right. <laughs> Stephanie, a brand of hard, heat-resistant glass used in ovenware. A Pyrex. That's right. Marcy, it's a material most hospital gloves are made of. Latex. That's right. <laughs> Stephanie, the brain's outer layer made of folded gray matter. Three seconds. Now, we were looking for a cerebral cortex. Yep, yep, that's yeah, they're it. are getting tougher. <laughs> Marcy, it's an instrument once used by sailors to measure distances between objects. Any guess? Exterior? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Stephanie is squirming there. Stephanie, no points, but did you know the answer? It's a sextant. That is a sextant was the answer. 
The score is tied, and we're on to the last question for each of you. Stephanie, it's the luxury vehicle division of Toyota. Lexus? That's right. Marcy, you need to get this question right to stay in the game. A rotating spindle of index cards with contact information. Rolodex. That's right. We are tied, so hands on your buzzers. This is for all the marbles. An elastic synthetic fiber that workout clothes might be made of. Stephanie. Spandex? That's right. Congratulations. You win. <laughs> what a close game, Marcy. Thank you so much. Congratulations, Stephanie. Enjoy your Rubik's Cube. And that's our show. Thanks so much for playing. For bonus games and stuff that's too hot for radio, look us up on Facebook and Twitter. And subscribe to our podcast on Google Play, iTunes, and Stitcher. Ask Me Another's puzzle guru is Art Chung. Hey, my name anagrams to Narc Thug. Our house musician is Jonathan Colton. Thou Jolta Cannon. Our puzzles were written by Matt Foster, David Letzler, and senior writers Greg Lightman and Karen Lurie. Ask Me Another is produced by Mike Katzeff, Travis Larchuk, Julia Melfi, Denny Shin, Ramel Wood, and our intern Camila Salazar, along with Anya Grudman. We are recorded by Damon Whittemore. Ask Me Another was created by Eric Newsom and Jesse Baker. We'd like to thank Megan Kilgore, Jackie Boyer and the staff at KERA. Rake. The Majestic Theater. The Rich Jet Seatmate. And our production partner, WNYC. CYNW. I'm her ripe begonias. Ophira Eisenberg. And this was Ask Me Another from NPR. Hey, it's Ophira Eisenberg here. Now, I know if you made it to this point in the podcast, you are a fan of our show. Thank you so much. So, why don't you do us a favor and rate us on iTunes? Or better yet, leave us a review. Your support helps other people find our podcast. Thank you. Next time on Ask Me Another, we're back at the Bell House in Brooklyn and joined by actors Dennis Quaid, Christian Cook, and Carrie Elwes to talk about season two of their show on Crackle, The Art of More. The series explores the surprising underbelly of the high-stakes New York art auction scene. So join me, Ophira Eisenberg, for NPR's Hour of Puzzles.